You're listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast, episode 54. You're listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast, where we believe business can be simple and you can use your intuition to run towards your goal. Self-made business and success coach, Lindsay Maloney, helps you start and scale your dream coaching business. With her step-by-step intuitive and creative guidance, you'll leave ready to put her tips into action, push your business forward, and work with your dream clients. Lindsay is here to help you get unstuck and structure your brilliance into a coaching business that's sustainable and financially exhilarating. Here's your host, Lindsay Maloney. Today we're visiting with Aaron Alexander, a Squarespace web designer, and we talk a lot about the differences between Squarespace and WordPress. We know there's always that big battle between the two. We talk about how easy it is to build your website on Squarespace and why she recommends it mostly, but then she also goes into um, how to choose the best platform for your business. And we dig into things like templates, SEO, all the things. I think you guys are really going to love this episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Erin, thank you so much for being on the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. I'm super excited to visit with you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. So basically... This conversation is started off great because we're both Squarespace girls and I love that. So I'm excited because we haven't had a, a web designer on here yet and we're really going to talk about um, how coaches can kind of find their own way to stand out online so they can get found. And I think Aaron's going to be a perfect guest to help us all do that. So Aaron, would you please introduce yourself and let us know um, how you got started and who you work with? Yeah. So um, I run a web design agency called Alexander Design Co. We help businesses create websites that help them get found, more clients, sell more products, and just really stand out online. And we, we typically work with women business owners. I work with a lot of service providers like coaches who are, you know, there's, there's so many coaches, but they want to be found. They want people to read their blog posts. They want to share their knowledge and make an impact. That's the biggest thing. So I just help them learn how to connect with their audience with their website. I love that. So how did you get started with this? Yeah, so I have a long history with being in love with design. I took design and website classes in high school, but then I studied visual communication design in college. And eventually I got my first design job at a newspaper But a couple of years later, when I had kids, I just knew that I wanted to be with them more. And I kind of just fell into, I found Squarespace and and I fell in love and I knew that I could do do this. So I just became a Squarespace designer and it was kind of by accident. I had no idea it was going to happen, but I'm so glad it did. Well, I love Squarespace too. It's what I always recommend to all of my students and clients because it's so easy. Did you start off on any other website platform or were you just all about Squarespace right from the bat? Yeah. So I thought that the only option for me was WordPress, but what happened was my website, I had put up like a simple website, got hacked and I didn't know what to do. So I deleted it and then I had found Squarespace when I was looking for a solution and I jumped in like (laughs) <laughs> at first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, now I primarily, I would say I work on Squarespace most often, but I also choose or I help clients choose which platform is best for them. Because as much as I love Squarespace and want everyone to use it, it's not always the best fit. So if they do need to work on WordPress or sometimes even Shopify, I'll help them with that too. That's interesting. We were just having a discussion about that in my Facebook group about um, one of the girls had said, I'm trying to decide if I should leave WordPress or go over to Squarespace. And everyone, of course, was chiming in with all their opinions. And I think we confused her even more. But how do you help people make that decision? Yeah, Um, I think I think it's really depends on your business model and what you have happening in your business. For example, Squarespace is great for service providers and coaches and web designers, copywriters, all of us who have a service and need a platform to tell our story. WordPress is great if you have like complicated stuff. So um, I'm working on a store right now, for example, that is very complicated. There's hundreds of products. And so breaking that down in Squarespace just wouldn't work out. We would have had to try to like 
hack the system. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go with something that would work. I have another client who she calls herself not tech, not tech savvy. So Mm -hmm. she had already been blogging on the free version of WordPress. And so I didn't want to add to her (laughs) stress and the free version and the new version are very similar. So we just kept her there because it made sense. But otherwise, we just kind of talk it through deciding which is going to be the best option for your business and you in this stage of your business. That's a, that's a great approach because yeah, not everyone is, um, like you said, they might call themselves not tech savvy. And so I love how you kind of figure out, you go where they are and you kind of start at their point and you don't force them to do this or that. So that's really important. Um, so I have a lot of people that I know that are on Squarespace, but I think a lot of times we get tripped up when we're building our site because we're constantly comparing our site to someone else's and trying to make it look like theirs. Do you see that a lot too? Yes, I definitely see that a lot, especially with Pinterest. So like I found this on Pinterest. I want my website to look exactly like it. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) I've been there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely hard to figure out where, where, how you want to stand out on your own. Cause you know, you find something on Pinterest or you see somebody's website and you're like, oh, I can make mine look like that. And it doesn't. And then you get frustrated and, and you realize you just spent 50 hours playing around in the back end of your website. So what is a way that coaches that are just starting or maybe feel like their website isn't working for them? What's like the first thing um, we can do to kind of maybe do you recommend just doing like a website audit and see how you like it from an, a, an outside perspective? Or what do you recommend? the first step be. Yeah. And audit is a great place to start, especially if you can have like someone else do your audit, even if it's just a friend who can be like, I don't know what you do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, when they pop on your website, I think that the most important thing that gets overlooked is that we focus on what we want it to look like and not the goals we want it to do. Mm -hmm. And I I'm totally obsessed with results. And so I'm always finding myself saying, do you want that to be there or do you want it to work? And so I think the first thing people need to do is sit down and figure out what goals and what outcome they want when people come to their website and design around that. That's really great. And what do you see some, some new trends with the way websites are laid out? Some things that kind of pop out, like this is kind of a new trend that everyone's kind of going to. Yeah. Oh man, there's so many. (laughs) I think, (laughs) so one of the ones that's that's been here for a while, but is not going away is full width images, like images that span from side to side. Mm -hmm. We used to have what we call headers and they were like little squares at the top or rectangles. And then there was like columns of color on the side. And that is a dead giveaway that your site is (laughs) outdated (laughs) or like really busy patterns. But (laughs) Like let's re I wish I could refer back to my first website in two thousand and ten. It had like crazy background and like <laughs> lime and pink on top of each other and music. <laughs> yes. It's easy to point out what isn't bad, but the cool trends I think are like really bright pops of color. I think that that trend is here to stay. Um using video a lot more to like explain welcome yourself, connect with clients right away or people who come on your right website. Using video on your website is huge and keeping it simple. Um, like I go through so many websites where I'm like, okay, you have too much text. No one's going to read this. What mm-hmm. really stands out? And so pulling out those things. And I think that those trends are really here to stay, but they're for the good. <laughs> I agree. I think that, um, back, you know, maybe like five years ago, I don't know if you agree. It seemed like we all wanted to have so much copy on our website and we've taken so much out because people's attention spans are so short and they're like, I just want to see bold lettering, bullet points and short paragraphs. Yeah. Like just like, I always think of like snapping, like click, 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 the sort of things that I want to see and the rest of it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So if we have such a short amount of time for people to get like hooked on our site and want to click on other things in our navigation bar, what, what do we do? How do we make ourselves stand out? What's a, what's a good tip? The tip is, I say this all the time. When someone comes to your website, the most important thing is the very first headline. It needs to be clear, concise, and catchy. Mm -hmm. So 
a lot of times, and I see this a lot with coaches because we have such emotional connection with our business. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way, but we want to say like the outcome of what you're going to get very touchy feely and it doesn't explain what we do. So it immediately turns people away because they don't understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And so when you're crafting a headline or writing a headline, you want it to be very clear. Like anybody could tell you what you do short enough that they're just going to read it really fast and not want to skim past it and uh, catchy so that they're like intrigued and, and want to dig deeper. And then once they start to dig deeper, that's when you can really hook them in with the, like the transformation and the emotions and that side of what you do instead of just, you know, wrapping it up in one sentence, which I think is really hard for a lot of coaches. It is. It definitely is. Um, I love your website. I'm looking at it right now. And right from the beginning, I know your header, it says get found online and make more money with your website. That's exactly what you do. And that's what your clients want. They want to get found and they want to make more money, right? So you were like, let's not make this a cutesy um, header title. We're just going to get clear and concise with what I do and what I help people do. And right away, I think it's a, a turnoff to simplify your phrases and your transformation for people. So people try to like add all these adjectives and do all these things. And then it just kind of gets confusing. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. And I think that we've also, you know, we've decided that we have one ideal client, which I believe that too. But then we're like, well, my perfect ideal client will get it. But if the perfect ideal client can't identify themselves right off the bat, they'll still just leave because we do have that short attention span. Yeah. It's just like your Instagram profile or anything. You have to make it super clear or else they're gone in in a millisecond and they'll totally forget about you. Exactly. Okay. So what other tips do you have for building your website? Let's say somebody's just starting. They know they want, they know what they want visually, but they're overwhelmed with the pages that they should have on their website. Do you have like some basics, what every website needs? Yes. (laughs) So for (laughs) service providers, I think, well, and especially in this online business, we need to keep it simple. So um, you need definitely need to have a homepage that packs a powerful punch. Like I, recommend you spend the most amount of time on your homepage, getting it right, figuring out the right language, breaking down the sections, basing your design off your goals, like we talked about earlier. And then you definitely need an about page that tells your story and connects with your audience. Um, the about page is super important. It should do three things. Mm-hmm. Draw your person in, and then you want to share how you've been in that similar situation. And then three, you talk about the transformation. So what helping what working with you will get. And then you definitely need a contact form, not just your email listed out because that is a sure sign that someone is going to spam you if you just have mm-hmm. your email address listed out. So you need an actual contact form where they can fill in your information, their information and get that back to you. It'll co- it'll go through your website. I think those are the three most vital and then The next thing I would do is create a services page where you at least have some kind of breakdown for people and you're transparent about your packages, because I think that that's another thing that people really want when they're, when they're ready to buy. If if you're on social media, they might have a different perspective, but if they're like first timers, then you definitely want to be, you want to have an offer for them on your website. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was looking at your about page while you were talking and I love it how, um, how it breaks everything up so nice. Like it almost looks like a sales page, but <laughs> it, but in a, in a good way, it's broken up. So it's like easily digestible. And I think, um, some of us are kind of back, like vin- we have like vintage about pages where we're talking about our life story. And yeah. that's really not, I think the out- about page is titled wrong. <laughs> it shouldn't be really about you, right? It should be yeah. about them. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's, a, it's a, and it, and it used to be different. Like people used to be fine with about page that talked about you and where you went to school and what your dog, <laughs> you know, like that used to be fine. But now we have to, we, we really have to sell ourselves on the about page and not in like a spammy way, but mm-hmm. we have to connect with our audience right away because our story is what's going to inspire them and what make them want to work with us. 
Yep, exactly. I mean, people, when they come to your about page and they see like what you've, what you, how you can relate to their struggles and like, it's just like introducing yourself to somebody. You don't say, you don't walk up to a stranger and say, well, I was born in North Dakota and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's not what you do. You, you, you start the relationship slowly in bite sized pieces and you kind of get to know each other. And that's a great place to start. Yeah. And I also think, I also want to know what your opinion is about when people have like way too many things on their on their navigation bar. Um, <laughs> what are your tips about that? How do people simplify that? Because it can get a little crazy. It can get a little crazy. I think you should have between five and seven. Like that's very strict. <laughs> um, between five and seven things that they could do and you kind of want to book in them so that the most important are on the front and the back. <laughs> so if you're um, like mine is my work with me page is the very first one. And then my last one is like my contact where they book a call because they're kind of going to get the things in the middle are going to get lost a little bit in their tunnel vision. Mm, that's a great tip. I think a lot of people always wonder how they should arrange those. <laughs> so that's a great tip. Yeah. And then I would say, if it's not mission critical or like one of your top goals, then it doesn't need to be in the the navigation. It could be in a footer. It can be on a sidebar. It could be a link that you reference a bunch of times. Um, but otherwise, keep the top simple and straightforward so that they can find exactly what they need. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so what do you recommend to people who are – who want to go into Squarespace, they're, they're caught up in the template area. What are, what are your favorite go-to templates? <laughs> oh, I, I always choose Brine. <laughs> well, I choose the Rally template. I actually have a blog post about this that I think really helps it because you shouldn't be picking your template on what it looks like. You want to pick a template on what it can do. Mm. So the reason I always choose something in the Brine family is because it has the most flexibility but when you're starting out and you're looking through all the options, even if you chose like rally, like I use, um, mm-hmm. and you go in there, there's a lot of options to choose from and it can be a little overwhelming. So I always say Brian is the most flexible, but you're going to have to learn the most <laughs> with it. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple other options that I love are um, the Hayden or Bradford template. It's yep. very standard blogger template. So if you're used to kind of like the blog with the sidebar, that's the one you're going to want to choose. And then my third favorite is the Pacific family. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I keep saying family because Squarespace templates there, there's like a couple of core templates and then each one has some variations that they've created that you can choose from, which is why Brian and Rally are like the same thing. They just look different on the preview. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I think that can get kind of confusing for people, even if a Squarespacer wants to change a template. Yeah. That's a really scary thing to do. Yeah. The nice thing is if you want to change templates is that there's a live preview. So you can preview the page, what the pages will look like, um, so that you can kind of make sure that it looks good before you go ahead and put, hit publish. Okay. I have a question for you then. Sure. So let's say um, you want to switch a template. You're tired of yours and you want to do like the brine or something. And mm-hmm. you, the, I've been there, I've been there many times when you switch off of, and you go to live and like all your stuff is gone. What do you, and then, and then you kind of go into freak out mode. If you don't know, let's mm-hmm. talk about what your first move is when you switch a template and it seems like all of your stuff is gone. <laughs> go when, if it seems like all of your stuff is d- gone, Go down to the unlinked pages of your Squarespace website because they're probably there. They're always there. (laughs) Yes, I remember when I first did it, I thought, oh my God, what did I just do? (laughs) Yeah, they get rearranged and I don't know why that happens because you'll look at the live preview and it looks good and then you hit publish and they're all jumbled up. But you can click and drag them to where you want them to be. So you can just drag them up the column. (laughs) Good. So with the Brian, this is just a general question. Do you have um, the option for index pages? Yes. That's why I love the, that's why I love that because index pages help you get that modern like section full width look. That's why I definitely does. Instead of just the, I remember when I first started on Squarespace, I used the five template and you don't get that that look on there. So index pages is a definite thing. And I, yeah. And I think on my blogging course that I have for 
um, my students, we um, create the blog on the Pacific template because again, like you said, that's a that's a really good choice for for beginners for sure. Yeah. I like Pacific because it's a simplified setup, so there's not as many options on the on the brine, but it still looks very modern, and it still has the um, index pages, which of the of my three favorites, they all have the index pages. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so what? Um, for Squarespace nerds, what does Brine have that no one else has? What makes Brine so special? So the Brine template has a double section in the header. So you can have like two rows of navigation. Now, I just told you not to put (laughs) so much stuff up there. (laughs) You'll see a lot of templates or a lot of designers put like social media links in the top, in the top Mm -hmm. section and then the second one. So then you can also decide if <clears throat> your logo is on a solid background or if it's over top of your your first picture in an index. Mm-hmm. So it kind of gives that more modern feel with instead of just having like a solid bar at the top mm. of navigation, your navigation can sit on top of your pictures, which they don't do in Pacific. At Pacific okay. Pacific, I believe. I'm having a hard time recalling exact details. But so that's the main thing um the index pages in the index page you can put any other block on top of the index page in the oh, brand okay page. and it also has that parallax scrolling so that when you're like scrolling down a website it looks yeah. like it's moving um that's the only template that has that feature i believe but oh that's interesting yeah so it's kind of a modern touch if you like that style mm-hmm. of web design i love that style and i think i actually have a um <laughs> a plugin to, to yeah. have that on the one that I have. So do you use um, Squarespace plugins or do you use um, a lot of custom coding? I do both. I love CSS. So if I can, you know, figure it out, I will write custom code for, in all of my clients' websites, I definitely use custom coding. But then I also use some third-party, you know, designers who have created plugins because there are definitely things beyond my level of design. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, for example, the Brine template doesn't have a sidebar on the blog, but I love that classic Brine or that classic blog feel. So, I have a plugin that I purchased that um, links to that uses that embeds a sidebar for me. Okay, yeah, I see it right here. Yeah, that's definitely classic blogger look. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I kind of like the that. mix of both. <laughs> I, I do really like that, um, and I like how you kind of um, if you guys go to Alexander designco.com you can kind of see on her blog section she has that that look on her sidebar she has the picture and like her intro social media all of that stuff on the side so that's a that's a cool look to bring back <laughs> <laughs> love that okay so what is your biggest tip now if somebody wants to move from wordpress to squarespace we'll kind of finish that off because that's kind of the big like oh my gosh that's going to be so much work so there is no easy way to move from WordPress to Squarespace. You can export your blogs, but they will probably not format right, Mm. unfortunately. So just be prepared to go through and update the way your blog looks on Squarespace because you're gonna have to resize pictures and add your, sometimes you have to add in the headlines. And I would say take that approach systematically, um, do a few at a time. And then the pages you're gonna end up If you're using the same copy and the same pictures, you're going to end up doing a lot of copy and pasting. So just be patient. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing I would do is, and I do this for every client, make a spreadsheet of all your URLs so that you can redirect um, the broken links. So because every pin you have out there, like on Pinterest or link you have on Facebook is going to probably end up broken. Oh yeah. I'm sure nobody thinks of that. No. And I have, even I've done this, like changed my website a couple times and not even once thought about the broken links, Mm. like just changing the layout or something. So make a spreadsheet and keep track of all your links. There's some tools you can use too. um, And I cannot think of one off the top of my head to like help you create that spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So if you switch templates, do you have to worry about that? Not, no, because the site structure, the pages usually stays the same. But if you, okay. add, like if you changed your um, homepage or something and change the URL structure inside mm-hmm. like the settings 
temp, like the settings tab of your page, then you won't have to worry about that. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that, that's a really good, a good tip, especially if somebody who's been a WordPresser for a long time and they do drive a lot of traffic from Pinterest, that is a definite thing to consider because that I'm sure that is a huge undertaking in itself. It is. And it can be discouraging when you see, and this is also true no matter what, you will see a dip. If you move platforms, you will see a dip in your traffic, your normal SEO traffic, but it will bounce back up after a couple of weeks. It just has to have like the Google robots <laughs> have mm-hmm. to have time to, you know, re-index your website. So don't be discouraged that you don't see results immediately. Um, it does take a few weeks to blow back up to what you were doing on your old platform. Okay. Okay. One last question. Is the myth or the rumor true that SEO works better for WordPress more than Squarespace? No, there are, um, (laughs) there's a ton of people who are number one on Google for, you know, topics and they're on Squarespace. I do believe you have to try a little bit harder on Squarespace because you have to know the right places to put information, but it is not true. And there are plenty of SEO people who can help you with that. Just Google SEO for Squarespace and you will get millions of blog posts that can help you get it up there right. Okay, good. Because I think that's a, another big one for people too. Awesome. Those are amazing tips. I'm really excited to share this with everyone because I have a big Squarespace audience and I think that this will definitely help them. And I bet you everyone is probably looking in the templates area because they want to switch to something else because I'm like, oh, I should just see. (laughs) That's a good, that's a good point. Actually, maybe I should write a blog post about that. (laughs) Yes, you should. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. This was so fun, Erin. Thank you so much for being on. I love this episode and I think everyone's going to love it too. Thank you so much. I was so happy to come and talk to you today. Yeah. Thank you. Want 10 ways for you to start booking your dream clients? I created this workbook for you because I wanted to share my best tips on how I book mine. You're not going to believe how easy these are, and I know you'll be able to take my tips and put them into action ASAP so you can start working with your dream clients. To grab the workbook for free, all you have to do is go to lindsaymaloney.com slash podcast. Hey coaches, are you a member of the Book Your Dream Clients community yet? Because you should be. Just go to dreamclientcommunity.com to request free access. We do fun things like website audits, challenges, and we even have a book club. Join the free Dream Client community now and we'll see you there. Thank you so much for listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. If you want to find out more information how you can work with me, just head on over to my website, lindsaymaloney.com. You will be able to see how you can work with me privately or in a group setting. I'm all about helping you start and scale your coaching business, so I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and leave a rating and review. And if you want bonus points, take a screenshot of a review and tag me on your Instagram story. I'd love to see it and share it with my audience. And plus, you don't want to miss another episode.